we are currently in the uh, uh, looking into the, the white thicker, which is the shuttle flight control room, uh, where we control space shuttle missions. Uh, there's a similar thicker, just like this one across the hall, that we call thicker one, and that's for the uh, space station control center. Let's see, uh, flight director. Um, you know, the the analogy is. Um, kind of the, the quarterback of the team and, and, the, and the head coach of the team. You, you, uh, Pre-flight, you, you work to design and build and, and lay out the mission, really orchestrate how it's going to work. Uh, and then in flight, you then execute that plan. Um, in terms of the actual workload that's done, it's done by the flight control team. Uh, Barry's a, a flight controller in the ECLA system, which is the life support system for the station. Um, so those folks would go off and take care of the individual subsystems they then report up the chain to the flight director who has the kind of the, the supervisory role for that mission. The, the purpose of mission control is really kind of um, twofold. One is, is safety. We obviously uh, can monitor a lot more data than the crew can. We have a lot more insight. We have a lot more resources at our disposal here. So if we, if we do detect a problem, we have uh, a lot more we can do quickly with it. Um, so we can keep the vehicle and the crew safe. Uh, the other thing we do is that replan type effort. If something does go wrong, whether it's just that we ran long one day and we didn't get everything done that we wanted to, uh, or that a failure happened and, and something didn't work right, we replan around it so that we don't waste the crew's time sitting around thinking about what to do next. They can move on to the next task. We'll replan their day for the following day, following week, uh, and then they can basically maximize their productivity uh, for the resource that we spent to get them up into space in the first place. If you can see behind us, um, the, the screens, there's a couple of screens up front that we use for situational awareness for the entire team. Uh, the, the map shows you where you are in the world and the trajectory that you're flying. Um, there's a, a spatial view that lets you see what orientation you're orbiting the Earth, whether you're, you're belly down, payload bay down to the Earth, um, which way you're flying. And then there's some, some big picture caution and warning, uh, any kind of alarms that the crew sees. We, we show those up on the big screens for everybody to look at. And then each individual console will have their own set of data that they'll use to monitor their subsystems. Um, Barry, you can talk a little more about what you guys look at at the ECLIS console. Sure. Um, every piece of equipment, every fan, every um, pressure sensor, temperature sensor. Um, so we have those like discrete, uh, what the actual value is at any time. And then we also have a whole set of plots that are constantly plotting things so we can look at trends over a um, couple days, couple weeks. Um, we, in, the, in the station world, I think more so than shuttle, the ground also does a lot more um, kind of flying of the vehicle. Uh, we send all the commands, large majority of the commands to the equipment to turn them on, change their settings. That's mainly done from the ground. Um, so we have a lot of tools on console uh, to support those activities. Um, and basically anything that we feel like we need to help uh, do our job, we actually create all these tools. Um, so it's, it's kind of an overload of data, but it's all set up so it's <laughs> You can sit there and kind of just look at your screens over big picture wise and get an idea of whether or not things are going well or not. In the old control center where we flew Apollo, uh, Mercury, Gemini, uh, those missions, the data was pretty much just raw telemetry coming from the vehicle, sometimes even in, in hex code that you then had to interpret to know what to do. So there was a lot of training on how to read what you were seeing. Uh, the new architecture does a lot of that translation for, you, for us already. We use a lot of software to show us what we need to see in the data so we don't spend our time trying to understand what that 101 pattern means, but instead you see the actual telemetry and, and the plot long-term trend, um, that kind of thing. The other thing that I did want to make sure, uh, one of the neat aspects of flight control is Barry, sitting as a station flight controller, every single day reaches out and commands the spacecraft on orbit, turns the pump on, turns the fan off, turns the heater on, turns the lights on and off if he wants to. Um, so you know he's actually every day commanding a spacecraft flying around the Earth at, uh, at Mach 25. It's pretty cool yeah. when you think about the, the capability we have. During, during busy activities during shuttle flights or uh, EVAs, spacewalks, we'll have a back room helping us out. But for the shuttle, uh, sorry, for the station world, a large majority of the time you're there by yourself. So you've gone through years of training in terms of seeing what actual data should look like. Um, you do um, a lot of following along with other certified people before you make it up front. So you've seen that data for a long time, so you have an idea of whether or not a line on the plot should be flat, should it you know, be a sawtooth pattern, things like that. Um, we also have we also have some tools that help us find little uh, things going wrong. We've got um, tools that will give us tones in our ears if, if certain values go out of what we define as the limits. Um, so we decide what right value should be, and then if those tones go off, we'll kind of take a look at that. Maybe it's transient data hit kind of thing, um, or maybe it's a really small um, minor failure that could cause us problems a week down the road. So 
for the most part, we, we know what we're looking for. Um, and then if things go wrong, um, it's, it's usually a lot of in-depth searching. It's not, it's very rarely is it an easy answer as to why one bit of data is kind of going off skew. We do all the homework we can ahead of time so we can understand what the environment we think we're going to see is. And then the next aspect is having the, the capability, the training, and the resources at their disposal to react in real time when it doesn't look like we expected it to. And then to kind of do the detective work to find out why. You have a pump that you can see the current that it's drawn, but you don't know how fast it's spinning, and you don't know what the output pressure is, but you can see that the current suddenly went up, and, and the temperature downstream suddenly went up a little bit too. So you have to infer what all that means, and, and your true engineering to go piece that together and figure out what happened, um, yet a lot of operations knowledge too to understand how the equipment's being used in the first place. It's probably being run a little bit outside the spec that it might have been designed for, uh, something like that. So a little bit of detective work too to figure out all that data that you're getting on your monitor.